Hello artists! This video is part of our watercolor workshop series. In this video, we will learn how to create the three birds watercolor painting. The first thing I've done is folded my thick white paper, not the thin white paper, but the thicker white paper in half, hamburger. And I'm folding it back and forth in order to weaken this line right down the middle because then I'm going to tear it in half. And it's gonna tear smoothly if I have made a really sharp crease and weakened the fibers of the paper. Make sure you have your materials ready. Paper, paints, paintbrushes, half full container of cold water, and a Sharpie, and paper towels. I'm gonna to start out by drawing a big wide U on the bottom of my paper. I'm going to leave room for two more birds, so I'm really thinking about what I'm doing here. I've drawn a line to close off the U at the top, and then I'm creating three tail feathers. And then a wing, a beak, and an eye. You can create your beak, your eye, and your tail feathers any way you want. For legs, I'm just drawing two simple lines. Now I'm going to draw another bird using the same idea, but this time I'm going to have it facing the opposite direction, and this little bird is standing on the bigger bird's back. Finally, I'm going to draw the tiny bird on the top and I'm giving each of these birds a different personality but I'm using the same drawing idea. You can experiment with how the direction of the eyes and the beak and the direction of the legs influences the personality of your birds. I've already wet all of my watercolors so I've taken my finger and dripped some water into every single color so they're wet and now I am painting. So for the large bird I'm starting out with green and filling it in very carefully and then I'm actually adding in some blue just to change the color a little bit and make it more interesting. This is an example of mixing the color right on the paper. So it's an example of wet on wet watercolor because I'm adding wet paint to an already wet paper. Instead of painting the tail and the wings on the green bird, I'm moving up to the medium sized middle bird and painting that red. I don't want to paint the other areas of the green bird yet because I want to give the green a chance to dry. If I paint the wings and the tail and the beak while the green is wet, they will flow together. So I'm going to go over it in layers. So first I'm going to paint the body color of all the birds. I'm going to give it a chance to dry and then I'm going to go back and paint the other sections. Here's another example of the wet on wet color mixing. My blue is still wet and I'm adding purple. And then I'm just adding some water and letting it flow and blend together. Now I have let this painting dry and I'm coming back to it. So this paper is completely dry. It's an hour later. And now I'm painting in the other sections. So the green and the red and the blue of the bodies of the birds is completely dry. So when I go in and I paint the wings and the tails and the beaks, it's not going to blend together. If you do it when it's wet, it probably will flow and mix together. So if you want that to happen, do it while it's wet. If you don't want it to blend together, wait. Be patient, let it dry, and then come back to it later. Inside this wing, I want the pink and the purple to mix and blend together, so I'm purposely doing it while it's wet. 
but I want I do not want the green of the body and the orange of the beak to blend together so I waited for the green to dry before I went in and painted the beaks I'm choosing contrasting colors or very different colors for the wings. So I'm choosing pink and red on the blue and purple bird because there, there's a lot of contrast there. It's very different, so those colors make each other pop. For this tail, I started with red on one end and then I'm adding yellow on the other end. And I'm doing wet and wet. I know they're gonna blend together and I want that to happen. So I am using the wet and wet idea purposefully. Remember that in your artwork and in your painting, you are the artist and you are the one who gets to make the decisions. So your artwork does not have to look like mine. Even though you're following a lesson, you're following a tutorial, it's great if you make yours completely different and if you try completely different things. The wonderful thing about art is that there's not a right and a wrong. I can show you some little tricks and I can show you how medias work, but I want you to experiment and I want you to use your own ideas and make it your own. Have fun and enjoy your time painting. Make sure you take a picture and post it so that everyone can enjoy your wonderful creative